Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Anthroposophy is a path of knowledge. It is a mystery, contemporary mystery school. And the focus of a mystery teaching is different, has a different will to it than the way in which information technology operates in the world today. Information technology wishes to provide you with answers. <laughs> Mystery schools wish to help you form questions. <laughs> And the rule of the mystery teachers in the past was that they always sought to reveal the mystery, but never solve it. The solution of the mystery takes away the power of the mystery. The answer prevents the striving. Mm -hmm. When you are given an answer, you cease to be a human. Because the human is a verb. It's not a noun. The human is an activity of striving. Activity of seeking. And the mystery teachers of the past always required that the pupil learn the hardest lesson. And the hardest lesson was telling yourself that you didn't understand something. <clears throat> when you have the feeling that you don't understand something, that is when the adversaries move in and usurp your power as a human. Unless you learn how to train your heart. Because your heart does not care about answers. <clears throat> it cares about activities. To your heart, an answer is a heart attack. It's fini, the end, kaput. <laughs> so the training in anthroposophy is to learn how to tolerate not having an answer. <coughs> That's the focus of the work. And it's a very difficult work in a society where everything is telling us that if you don't have the answer, you're not satisfied. You need the answer in 0.27 seconds when you hit Google search. In 0.27 seconds, you have a million possibilities. And if you don't, you're going to look for more RAM. Or you're going to get a new server that'll give you more access. And that is what I was talking about last night. That consciousness of expecting that you're going to get the download and walk away with a carrot is the problem. That is the human problem. Now in your neurology, you have a part of your neurology called the striatum, or striatum. And it's a very primitive part because in the embryo, it's just a little strip of tissue. It's a little groove. And it's given to you in order to maintain your organism. It's under the 
the auspices, it's under the control, if you will, of the hierarchies. It's what we call stimulus response patterns based on risk and reward strategies. And the stimulus is always some type of sense experience. That sense experience triggers in you a glandular response. The secretion from a gland is a codified behavior. Adrenaline is a codified behavior. Progesterone, a codified behavior. Melatonin, go to sleep. Thyroid stimulating hormone, wake up. You are not you when you are under the influence. You are not a human when you are under the influence of adrenaline. You are a successful animal. Because you must, your heart must be, your viscera must uh, <clears throat> move along, your lungs start beating. You are not present in that activity as a human. You are present in that as a biological imperative. And that's based on sensory experience, which is where the issue of technical will finds its interface, to use a word. So technical will becomes your will through sense activity, because sense activity is only one kind of memory. It's called sensory motor response in the striatum. It means I see something and I respond according to the program, to the menu, to my glandular experience. My consciousness is flight, fight, freeze, or be satisfied. That's, and when I'm in flight, when I'm freezing, I can't become you. And I can only be a true human when I become you. I can't be a true human just by remaining in my study. I have to make connections. And when I make the connections, usually they are connections, if it's another human, that, are, that have thought patterns that are definitely not mine. And I have to grow in myself. And so last night I was bringing pictures from the world of how sense activity is being impacted to create thought patterns or memories that are simply reactive. This is propaganda. This is news cycles. This is stock market reports. It was propaganda to create anxiety. And it's a whole system of memory in human that keeps my biology intact, but doesn't allow me to awaken in you because it is forcing me to be just me. so that I can survive my anxiety. And it's, and it's very skillfully manipulated through imagery and data and abstraction. And those forces 
create in me an, a sensory motor anxiety. And the hierarchies who created that part of my neurology have allowed an organ to develop in my brain that allows me to soothe that, that anxiety, that sensory motor anxiety, that stimulus response anxiety. So I have a sensation, I don't know what it is, I get anxious, I become two years old, and I start projecting out. That is not me as a human. That is a memory of a biological reality that I have transcended. But in my organism, I have an organ that creates a substance called dopamine. Dopamine creates euphoria, satisfaction, and bliss to soothe my anxiety of being constantly impacted by the sense world. Dopamine is the source of neurogenesis, meaning when dopamine is moving through my neurology, new neurons are being created through an inflammatory process new brain cells that are not designated for any kind of thought pattern. So my sensory motor memory from the past triggers the possibility of changing my behavior. This is called learning. However, there is a downside. And the downside is that dopamine is the chemical that is present in addictive patterns. Anything, anything that creates a, re a repetition makes it difficult for us to get satisfaction from dopamine. This is, your first cigarette is interesting, your second one is even more interesting, but your two millionth cigarette is interesting for a whole other reason. Because that's why you're in the clinic with emphysema. But it's the same act. What has changed is the fact that I no longer get satisfaction from the cigarette because those receptors are already clogged with dopamine. This is, there's a lot of research done today on dopamine because it's the basis of not only addiction, but Alzheimer's, Parkinson's disease, ADD problems, attention deficit disorder, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, the uh, disorders du jour today all involve dopamine of the day. They all involve this production of new neurons that is a gift from the hierarchies to us to refurbish our neurology so that my soul can use my instrument of my body in a different way. We are given great gifts by the hierarchies to change. However, when I have this sensory stimulus flood me and all of this chemistry is happening, it is inflammatory. It may, it's, we could say it creates very strong feelings of invulnerability and egotism. And it's in, and invincibility. This is alcohol and drugs, basically, or dopamine. So when I, 
when I'm feeling like I am the king of the hill, I'm inflating. And the hierarchies have said, oh, you know, if we give too much of this, we need something to inhibit that. And there's an inhibitor, which if you have too much of the inhibitor, then you get depression and bipolar diseases and things like that. So your neurology is a picture of the fall from paradise into being recalled late and slow. Your, your brain is an image of the drama of the humans coming from a spiritual world, incarnating, and then having to awaken in other people. It's the great drama. So the inhibiting quality actually is a forming quality. It actually forms structures. The, the, the process of inhibition forms the neurons into new patterns. The sensory input creates new neurons through inflammation. And then I have to say, oh, well, wait a minute, what was that out there? That tree-like thing. Rudolf mm -hmm. Steiner calls that judgment. Judgment is inhibiting. It says, no, I don't think you can do that. So that these, the, the inflation and the inhibition need to be balanced and they're balanced in the soul by recognizing that certain sensations create in me desires. Certain sense activity creates in my soul desires through the forming of what Rudolf Steiner calls mental images. We call it pictures. You have a sense impression, the sense impression comes into you, and then suddenly you have a picture of it, but you're not seeing that thing anymore. That's a memory. And I can have a memory just of the sense impression, or I can have a memory of a time before when it was I who had the sense impression. That's called going to school. Or I can have a memory that it was I who had that sense impression before and it didn't end up well, so I have to change myself. That's another kind of memory that's called initiation. My sense activity is one kind of memory that I'm, the pictures come up, I'm not aware of them. Then I have what's called biographical memory or declarative memory where I say, this is an experience that I had, it's called a tree. Most of the learning that happens today is just those combinations of those two kinds of memories because the culture at large does not recognize the process of initiation. Why? Because they expect that when I have a sense impression and I want to know what the answer is, I'm going to be able to declare it, usually by the end <coughs> of the lecture. Or by the end of the book or by the end of the paragraph. Why else read the paragraph if I'm not going to have any information? Well, if you know Rudolf Steiner's work, every second paragraph is contradicting the paragraph mm -hmm. before it. <laughs> and that's not random. That is the very mark of the teaching in the mystery stream. 